Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, uh, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, um, you know, we have uh, on occasion spoken about the Baltic states and the uh, intense uh, Russophobia uh, to which uh, they uh, give a vent um, almost all of the time. Um, you know, we know that um, you know, Latvia wants to cut off all um, visas to uh, Russian tourists, as do Estonia and uh, Lithuania. And we know about how they're always coming up with um, uh, World War II memorials to uh, take down. And they, um, Latvia in particular, um, I think yesterday took down a, a major um, World War II memorials, which, you know, in the media, uh, um, is naturally celebrated, but of course, no one really raises the question. I mean, if you're taking down that memorial, I, I, are you suggesting that it would have been preferable had the Red Army not come in and that, you know, Latvia should have remained under Nazi rule? I mean, if you're taking it down, that would suggest that this is something to be ashamed of and that it would have been better to leave um, Latvia um, under Nazi rule. I mean, that's the implication. Also, also so at the, um, at the end of the Soviet Union and the, the advent of the Russian Federation, they had to establish new uh, diplomatic relations with all of these countries. Right. And, and part of that um, uh, engagement was the respect of Soviet war memorials. I mean, yes. so it, it's something that they were obligated to be, uh, uh, they, they, they willingly went into this agreement. Right. That doesn't mean uh, there can't be negotiations, doesn't mean, but what it does mean is you have to communicate you know, a new residential, the city gets bigger and bigger, we need to move this. There, there are ways you can move these mem um, uh, memorials and, and sometimes uh, um, cemeteries, and you do right. it in a very dignified, graceful way. It's not categoric, okay? Right. Right. You have to engage. That's something they, they re uh, uh, categorically refuse to do. That's right, and uh, uh, they, they refuse to do that, and again, we're talking about the extent of the Red Army casualties, so just the numbers are quite staggering that it took to uh, liberate um, uh, the Baltic states. And all of this is, of course, second and third hand hatred because the Baltic states have now been independent for uh, 30 years. So you have to be um, at least about in your late 40s, even to have any kind of a memory of the horrors of uh, the, the Soviet life. Um, so uh, let, no one alive who remembers Stalin. I mean, that, you know, that, that, so that, that's all gone. So um, it's all phony. I mean, it's, a, it's an artificially whipped up uh, anti-Russian feeling. So now Latvia apparently will uh, prohibit um, Russian being spoken in um, workplaces. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, the, the president of Latvia uh, recently uh, said that uh, the Russian minority is a kind of an alien wedge within Latvia. And I, I want to show you, Peter. Um, an you know, EU country said that. Ex 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 and that's exactly right. So here we have um, the... Um, so this is a Latvia's leader calls to isolate Russian speaking residents disloyal to state policy. Government starts is to quote, isolate from society, unquote, those opposing political course of Latvia on Russia Ukraine war. Now let's remember, I mean, I, I got, I'm just going by the CIA World Factbook, according to which uh, Russians uh, comprise about 27% of the population, but <clears throat> Belarusians comprise about 30%, 33% rather. Um, so together, that, they comprise 30%. That's a substantial minority. That's not a, that's not a small minority. Um, and so it's a Latvian leader called on Wednesday for the isolation of Russian speaking residents of the Baltic countries who oppose the political course uh, of the state on the Russian Ukraine war. And he says, he underlined that after the beginning of the military conflict in Ukraine, both positive and negative effects were observed uh, in Latvian society, while the citizens of Latvia have become, quote, more patriotic, unquote. According to Levitt, the positive effect is that the majority of society has become more aware of their country and the price of freedom. 
And then meanwhile, the negative effect is that a section of Russian society that is not loyal to the state has appeared. Noting our task is to deal with that section of society and isolate it from society. Now, um, is that like creating ghettos? Yeah, now let me uh, show you. This is Article 21 of the Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union. Article 21, any discrimination based on any ground such as sex, race, color, ethnic or social origin, genetic features, language, religion or belief, political or any other opinion, membership of a national minority, property, birth, disability, age or sexual orientation shall be prohibited within the scope of the application of the treaties and without prejudice to any of the specific provisions any discrimination on grounds of nationality shall be prohibited. And yet, we hear nothing from the EU. Ursula von der Leyen has said nothing. Charles Michel has said nothing. Olaf, Sergeant Schultz, has said nothing. <laughs> um, I, I don't think Ned Price has said anything either. I don't think so. I mean, this is so blatant, but of course, that's the, uh, the poison of NATO, because Latvia thinks that, well, we can get away with anything. I mean, we can just do what we like to the Russians, because if the Russians do anything about it, hey, Article 5, that's it. We've got, they've got our back. You know, we, we can just do anything we like, because um, the Russians wouldn't dare to mess with us, because then they know they've got a world war with the United States on their hands. Um, as we've discussed many times, it's a kind of a fatuous belief, but that's no, no question. That's why they think they can just get away with such open insults. Um, but, but anyway, um, there was an interesting article that appeared on the BBC um, news site the other day, um, which although obviously very anti-Russian, um, nonetheless disclosed that there was this real blatant and, and quite sinister discrimination going on in Latvia against uh, Russian. So it says Russian speakers in Latvia are told to pick sides in test of patriotism. Uh, and it says most Russian speakers in Latvia have spent their lives absorbing Russian state TV because of a lack of Russian language content in their own country. Oh, and <laughs> which is nice, you know, the lack of Russian language content in their own country. And that has left many seeking the world, seeing the world through a narrative that portrays the idea of a united Russian world with Kremlin at its center. Um, until the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Russian and Ukrainian families were sent to Latvia as part of a program of forced relocation of labor. Others are descendants of the Russians who moved to Latvia centuries ago, and some originate from Belarus or are of Jewish descent. This is really interesting. I mean, I, I was got a Jewish descent. So now they're apparently, um, they, they, uh, being Jewish is a kind of separate national identity, which is a very interesting that the BBC should regard, you know, being yeah, Jewish. Yeah, it's not, it's not part of the Anglo-Saxon um, tradition at, at all. No, it, 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 it isn't. They seem to be adopting it. Right, exactly, but to say that they're Jewish would suggest, I mean, if you're saying Russian Jews, I mean, you always thought of Russian Jews as being a Russian. So here they also have Jewish descent, so they're, they're actually, they may be Russian Jews, but they're actually Jews rather than Russians, which is kind yes. of an interesting for the BBC to adhere to. Well, I guess, you know, uh, there's, um, you have, you're either Latvian or you're Jewish, but you can't be both. You can't be both, that's, that's, that, that's right. Um, that's, I mean, that's very discriminatory and I would say bigoted. And I, would say so. I, I would say so too. Um, Latvian and international leaders are wary of Vladimir Putin's designs on the Here Baltic. We Here we go again. Here we go again. The, uh, exactly. And then his justification for invading Ukraine was that Eastern Donbass region was home to Russian speakers who needed the Kremlin's protection. Latvia fears he could apply the same logic there. And then he says, NATO has responded by doubling the size of its force in Latvia with more to come. And the government in Riga is even discussing conscription. Well, if you fear that uh, the Russians might interfere if you start discriminating and treating the Russian, your Russians badly, then why so are you doing it? <laughs> then don't do it. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, if, 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 you know, if you know 
that the Russians feel very strongly when their nationals are being treated badly. And it sounds like, you know, if you're going down this path, that Russians are not going to be permitted to speak Russian in the office place, um, you're kind of asking for it. Now, I'm not saying Russia will invade, but you are asking for it uh, because um, uh, uh, there, there's, there's just a limit to um, how many insults uh, the Russians uh, can take. So um, <laughs> if your fear is Russia, then you should uh, comport yourself in a way which you know, protects Russian interests, and then you don't have Russia uh, getting angry. Um, but if, of course, you don't fear Russia because you think, hey, NATO's got our back, we can do what the hell we like, you know, um, then again, it shows what a poisonous uh, creature NATO really is. I mean, NATO is essentially facilitating blatant uh, discrimination here. Yeah, and um, I guess being Latvian is it's a very, very narrow definition of that, okay? Um, and these Russian speakers, I mean, they have legal status in Latvia. I mean, they're not like homeless people, okay? Right. Not squatters, okay? Right. And they, 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 they're owed uh, protections under the convention that you just uh, cited here. Shot of the fundamental but rights, yeah. not. See, And also, you know, bringing up the Eastern Donbass region. Well, right. they were under military assault for eight years, okay? Yeah. And, and in Latvia, people are just wanting to be able to speak their opinion, um, be proud of their national origins, and cutting off any kind of ties. Well, again, I'm sure there's another convention that the EU has where you're, you're cutting off um, families from uh, United, okay? Right. Which again, right. again, may be a violation of civil rights under right. EU law. <clears throat> right, that's, that's and, right. And everyone, you know, I'm sorry, I know the history very, very well. I understand the arguments on all sides, but the Soviet Union is gone, okay? And it, it, um, it, uh, Russia has no interest in, in occupying the Baltic states. For what? Is there oil there? There is no interest in that whatsoever. And this is, this is such a canard all the time that they, you know, um, we need NATO because of the vulnerable countries of the Baltics. No, I've said this before, George. You have, young people in Latvia, young Latvians, they are leaving Latvia because of the neoliberal economic model uh, right. that they have. Their, their right. prospects are but, very, very. That's right. Limited. But but what what's what's interesting? You said that the Russians have no interest at all in occupying the Baltic states, and I and I agree with you. But if you start persecuting yeah. the Russians then you know Russia will go into action. I mean, if, if India is permitted to enter uh, East Bengal or what was called East Pakistan in 1971 because the Bengalis were being persecuted by uh, the Pakistan government and the Turks entered uh, uh, Cyprus, you know, and uh, nothing was being done to the Turkish Cypriots. I mean, <laughs> that was a boat, you know. I mean, Turkey just invaded to take a chunk of Cyprus, but at least but they invoked the threat to Turkish Cypriots. Uh, you know, you know, that's basically, you know, the Russia would have then have a legitimate pretext. Of course, you know, NATO will deny that it's legitimate, but, you know, by any understanding, you know, it's legitimate. If you're, if you are, you know, there's an imminent threat of, uh, of whatever to uh, your, your Russia. And again, should there be conflict with NATO, then, you know, Russia would have to occupy the Baltic states, I mean, just to uh, seize the ports. You know, you need I, so again. NATO, NATO is kind of creating uh, it, it, these problems for itself. It, it, exactly, and you and I over the last six months, I think I've um, mentioned it more times than you have. Is that you know what? What does NATO really want to have a situation where it has to invoke Article Five? I mean, because this is one. You know, this is one that is just uh, pouring a fuel on the fire. I mean, you really are um, uh, pushing the limits here because you know when we look at one of the primary reasons uh, for the operation in, in Ukraine was to protect Rus ethnic Russians and Russian speakers. I mean, right. hello, Latvia, it can happen, right. okay? Exactly. Why are you pushing your luck? And yeah. when I mentioned Article 5, again, do you think Erdogan is going to say, yeah, you've been treating these people really bad. Well, I'm not going to get involved in this. Yeah, that's right. Hungarian today, we know what that's like because our compatriots uh, in, in in Ukraine are right. treated badly too. I mean, are these mandarins in Brussels really think this is a smart idea? 
Right, right. Well, it, it looks like it because they're not saying anything about it. I mean, again, I mean, you think, well, <laughs> why, why isn't anyone uh, say, saying any, anything about this? So they kind of, again, sleepwalking into, um, you know, in, in another uh, crisis. But even the Russian speakers, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, there's a very substantial um, uh, part of those Russian speakers. They don't actually have Latvian citizenship because they have to pass uh, Latvian language tests. And that, of course, is, is a hard language test. And that, of course, is a discrimination against the national minorities, and that is a violation of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. If, if you're denying people citizenship uh, on the basis that they can't pass a language test, then you know you are practicing discrimination, and that is obviously in violation of EU values. And again, EU says nothing about these values. They're very preoccupied with what goes on in Russia, not too preoccupied with what goes on in the EU. And we have in the Baltic Republics every single year, we have um, uh, Waffen SS units. Yep. You know, yep. and, and these people, I mean, this is a, a received memory now. These guys, there are not very many of them left, okay? They can't, they can't, and, and, yeah. and I would go as far as to say, is, it, is this, or maybe say it rhetorically, is this part of the definition of being Latvian and Lithuanian and Estonian? Right. Is right. that part of your identity? Identifying right. with the Waffen SS? Is that, is that, is that a fair question to that, ask? That's, a part, that's part of your national, yeah, no, that's, a, that's a very good question. Um, as a, Russian media channels have been banned and any public support for the war in Ukraine or Russian aggression can now lead to criminal prosecution. So, you know, again, this is a BBC report, you know, very anti-Russian, but nonetheless, it kind of says this. It, so any public support for the war in Ukraine or Russian aggression can now lead to criminal prosecution. Hey, um, freedom of speech, uh, and, and is that part of the values? Oh, no, not, not, not the values. You know, we're, Even again, freedom of, of assembly, because I know that they're um, um, making it very uh, difficult for uh, Russian speakers uh, to protest the taking down of these monuments. Right. Yes, that's right. So monuments seen as glorifying the old Soviet unions are to be removed. And then this high on the list is this towering victory monument which was taken down, I think, yesterday. And, and then Latvians are not allowed to hold dual Russian citizenship. And now life is becoming harder for Russian nationals who live in Latvia. After President Eagles said that those who support Russia, Russia's war should lose their residence permit. Huh. Uh, <laughs> Well, I guess this is the Latvian version of Jim Crow, okay? Yes, 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 quite. Um, uh, marginalizing people, denying them due process. Um, I said at uh, the very, very beginning, it sounds like you know, they want to isolate, they want to ghettoize, they want to create Sounds like it. Sounds like it. But it sounds like to me. That's what it sounds like. Isolate, uh, and maybe even worse, maybe just expel them. Uh, just throw them out. Um, and it says... For Latvia's authorities, the loyalty of its citizens is at least as important as the tanks and soldiers it can muster. The question being discussed behind closed doors is who, or I think they should mean whom, do Latvian Russians really believe? Latvian Western and Ukrainian leaders or Russian propaganda? That's a nice, nice little. Yeah, that's an interesting juxtaposition. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. which was allowed on Latvia's airways for 30 years. Wow, it was so generous to allow Russian propaganda on its airways. What, what, what great guys. But, they, but as the article said in the very beginning, the, 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 the media assets that they, uh, the Russians in Latvia have access to are so, it, it's, it's probably not even worth talking about. So right. what do you do? You go on the internet and you listen to Pierre right. Vitano and Yep, that's right. That, that, that's, that's all you can do. And then, and then they cite this guy, Alexander Dubiako, 19, was arrested after waving a Russian flag and giving a speech in front of Riga's huge Soviet war memorial on the 10th of May. He was attending an unofficial gathering to celebrate Victory Day, an annual holiday that commemorates the Soviet victory over Nazi Germany. Officials That's, noble. That's noble, isn't it, George, by yeah. any definition? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Official celebrations were banned as they were seen as a glorification of Russia, which led to protests like the one Alex attended. And then says, quote, I saw the flag as a symbol of unity. I consider the Victory Day a day of unity. 
uh, there was just an incredible atmosphere, a sense of togetherness that I have not seen in Latvia for a long time, he told the BBC. Latvian police saw his action as a sign of support for Russian aggression in Ukraine, which Alexander and his family say was not the case. He was charged under a law that outlaws glorification of genocide and war crimes. He is now awaiting sentences. The maximum punishment is five years in prison. But apparently the law doesn't um, ban uh, Nazi uh, commemorations. I mean, the Bafana says that, that that law, this law about genocide, that law clearly doesn't apply to the Bafana says, <laughs> but it does apply to this kid uh, waving the Russian flag. Well, I, I don't see the connection between um, uh, commemorating Victory Day over fascism in Europe and, um, and, and its connection to quote unquote Russian aggression in Ukraine. I don't right. see and glorification of ge genocide and war crimes. That is glorification of genocide. So, um, so evidently they say commemorating victory in World War II is a celebration of war crimes and genocide. You're, you're kind of pretty much going into Nazi apologetics here. I mean, <laughs> if you follow the logic, is you're saying, hey, they were attacking, you know, decent, you know, hardworking uh, rulers of Latvia, you know, the, you know, the Nazis, they were just doing, doing their best. Um, and then instead- you know, then I mean, were... But you said it at the very beginning, so would have it been better if- well, that's the implication. That's Europe the, that's the implication. under Nazi occupation to the present? Yeah, is that, is that's that the implication. Outcome? I mean, if you follow the logic of the argument, that's the implication. I mean, you know, Father Christmas wasn't available. I mean, the, you know, Father Christmas wasn't coming to uh, liberate the Baltic states. You know, it was gonna be either Nazis or um, the Red Army. There was, there was no other alternative. So by saying, oh, this is something terrible, um, you're suggesting, well, it would have been preferable to let the Nazis um, continue ruling, which I'm sure these people really believe. I mean, they've, they've come pretty close to saying just that. Well, they, they, they as you said, I mean, it, it's uh, against, uh, uh, it's against Latvian law to celebrate victory over fascism in Europe on Victory Day, but right. it's pretty legal to march with Nazi regalia. So right. I guess it tells us all we need to know. That's and right. this is in the EU, everyone. EU. In the okay. EU. The EU. EU is always talking about, you know, um, uh, my, my minorities that are oppressed and marginalized. You know, they, 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 every year they come out with an elaborate report on Russia and all of this, but they don't seem to look in their own uh, inside their own house. That's right. That's right. And then, and then they're quoting his mother, Svetlana, says, my grandfather went through the war. We believe this is a memory that should be honored and respected, uh, says his mother, Svetlana, who was with him when he was arrested. Both have since received death threats on social media. And then, then she says, we are forced to be ashamed, to be afraid that we are Russians. Uh, and what this is also wrong. And then um, for the majority of Latvia's Russian speakers, Victory Day has always been important, even though many condemn Russian aggression and consider themselves Latvian patriots. But the more they feel they are being asked to give up their identity for the sake of loyalty to the West, the more divided Latvian society could become. Um, so this is values, the, the, the values that Stoltenberg lives by, the Ursula von der Leyen, um, they are being asked to uh, strip themselves of their culture, of their language, of their national identity, um, because otherwise they're not held to be uh, loyal to NATO and the Atlantic community um, on pain of imprisonment and maybe uh, worse since they're talking about uh, isolation. So we need to understand, so is it possible under any circumstances that an ethnic Russian who speaks Russian that has strong connections with Russia, has family in Russia, well, they'll, would they be ever considered Latvian by the way these people think? I tend to doubt it. No, that's right. No, 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 no way. I mean, I, and I, I, think... I, I can't remember the 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 uh, uh, American um, indigenous tribe. It, it was a tribe that was in Appalachia, and they they went with um, um, uh, the, the, the white dress code. They had schools. They they did everything. They spoke right. English. They did 
and they still were slaughtered. They did everything that was asked of them. And That's there right. was always a reason not to consider them That's right. uh, a citizen, okay? That's right. And it's the same thing. No, my point is, is no, no matter what you say or do, you're always gonna be stigmatized as being Russian. And that's something that's right. something is considered a negative and excludes being part of a, a Latvian identity, which but is again, right. everything the EU spouts off 24 right. seven. Right, but it's, 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 it's even more, um, it's dreadful than that because it's not just that they're not regarded as Latvians, they are regarded as the embodiment of evil because they're Russians and Russians are evil. Um, and so therefore, you know, no matter how much they uh, um, will ultimately, you know, right, give up your language, you know, stop, you know, give up your Russian name, you know, give up your culture. Uh, but even so, they will still suspect that, hey, you know, there might be something in your DNA that uh, that refers back but, to uh, Russia. But isn't that racism, John? I, I would have thought it is, uh, you know, um, racism. Um, but what is so shocking, and in fact, I mean, you know, that BBC article was was quite quite fair. I mean, they they they, they, they opened it. Yeah, yeah uh, they they made interesting points. But the fact is. And, and it's interesting that that BBC article didn't wasn't able to quote any EU official, any European official saying, well, I, I don't really think that this has a place in the European Union. I, I, you know, I, th I think this is not really where we want to go. And of course, the European Union is never going to do it. I mean, they, they haven't. I mean, the Russians have been protesting about how their nationals be, were being treated in the Baltic states since 1991 and the EU hasn't given a damn about it. So here it's now got worse. Um, and that's why I think that, you know, they're now treading on thin ice because this is not the Russia of 1992. This is a, a Russia that is much angrier uh, towards the West and they feel much stronger. And they've kind of defied NATO. So they're not, they're not quite as intimidated by uh, NATO. I mean, Stoltenberg can talk about Article 5, one for all and all for long, you know, they're onward men. Um, you know, I don't think well, the Russians are that impressed. Makes them into a defensive racist. Right, exactly. An, an, another thing that's really important for uh, Gagwas to understand is that the arrest of the young man um, 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 commemorating Victory Day in Latvia, that makes the headlines here. Right. And, this, and then they say, this is EU value. See, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that, you know, the BBC they're so absorbed with their own ideology and their and their and their readers and viewers that they don't understand how the same article that George has just thoroughly gone through can right. you be used directly again and say, say right. I showed you, I told right. you. I mean, even the BBC admits this, okay? That's right. That's right. Because That's right. because when Russians are treated badly abroad, it makes the news and it shows that these people don't like Russians. They say they're not racist, but they are. They say they um, believe in the rule of law, but they don't. And just every step of the way, they, right. the West delegitimizes itself by its arrogance and, and um, um, uh, uh, omission. Om right. This just isn't really an important story. It's, right. They just they omit it. That's right, that's right, that, that's right. And it's kind of an in interesting thing. I mean, is that um, they want to express their the hatred for Russia by taking down these um, wartime memorials, um, you know, just at the same time as uh, the New York Times will tell us, well, 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 you know, this was the Red Army, this, was, this wasn't Russia, you know, because, you know, in, in anything that's good, like victory over Nazism, that of course had nothing to do with Russia. I mean, that was, you know, that was the, you know, the, the Ukrainian divisions, the, 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 <laughs> the bulk of the fighting. Uh, the, the Russian Soviet, uh, Soviet Republic had nothing to do with Nothing, the nothing whatever no. to do, no. On the other hand, the, uh, you know, the, the famine in Ukraine, that was driven by the Russians. That, that, that was the Russians. So, you know, if there's something negative to be said, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's on Putin. Putin is to blame for uh, the famine of 1932. So, you know, that, you know, it, it's always very interesting how, you know, when they, they do this, they take it down and, and so, oh, yeah, they're taken down, you know, because they have bad memories of Soviet occupation. Okay, that's Soviet occupation. What has that got to do with uh, Russia? I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's so, I mean, they, you know, you know, take it up with Joseph Stalin, it was a Georgian. So uh, what's it got to do with Russia? And plus here, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, those are separate countries that get very little, there's very little interest in them right. except for the persecution 
uh, of Russian nationals. And the only, the, the only, and then the next level layer that's important is the Soviet war loss yeah. of liberating it. Okay. Right. So, exactly. you know, they, so, it, and, you know, middle aged average Russians say, you know, well, but that was Soviet Red Army did that. Right. I mean, I, I didn't do that. And you guys have, you're in NATO, you're in the European Union. Right. Okay? Why don't you just live up to both values if they right. exist? It's just some, that's how the Russians look at it. You know, it's yes, very sir. black and white. There's no, there's no in between here. What you do is wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, well, that's right. And, um, but, but that's, you know, part of the whole, um, project that's been going on for, for a number of years in the EU is to suggest that um, the Soviet Union had nothing really to do with the victory over fascism. In fact, the Soviet Union and Hitler were allies, and that this was a kind of a fight, the war against the totalitarianism, so, you know, you know the, the gallant, um, the British and the Americans, and, you know, you know the good guys in the West, in the West Europe, you know, the ones who weren't aligned with Hitler, like, you know, Italy, Spain, Portugal, you know, <laughs> go through the rest, uh, Hungary, uh, <laughs> Croatia, you know, no, 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 they, 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 were, they, they were on the outside. They were the bad guys. The Soviet Union were the, on the wrong side in World War II. There's no reaction. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, but it's <laughs> absolutely bizarre. And it, but it, it's been part of the literature now for a good 20 years. So it's really, you know, constantly um, pounding away at revisionism. That's right. And, That's that, right. and that infuriates people. I, you know, George and I have done countless numbers of, of, uh, of videos on this here, but you do not besmirch okay. the, the sacrifice during the Great Patriotic War. You don't go there. You just That's don't right. go there. Because right. what you do is then people are in lockstep unity, okay? All of a sudden, you know, if you like Putin or not, it doesn't matter, okay? You don't do that. And the yeah. Latvians, in this case here, are just pushing it in your face, pushing it, okay? Yeah. George is right. I mean, with these kind of um, um, uh, actions, punitive actions against this population, don't go there. Be right. careful what you do. That's right. They, uh, because um, this war in Ukraine will come to an end, and then... Um, you know, the Russians are going to say, well, you know, there's, there's some other unfinished business. You know, we're, we're just not going to tolerate, um, you know, these uh, countries on our borders uh, treating our nationals in this way. I mean, you know, we, we just, you know, why should we tolerate? Why should we tolerate that you're going to isolate the Russians from society? And then, and then what? They're not, they're not going to be allowed to enjoy government services. They're not going to be allowed to shop where they want to. Well, what does it mean you're going to isolate them? They're going to have their own uh, schools. Not, you know, we don't want to sit next to Russians. What do you think? It puts an armband on? Yeah, that, that's that's what it sounds like. Now, if you go down that path, the Russians aren't going to just sit on their hands. The, the whole idea of the EU is some kind of civic virtue. There's nothing virtuous about this at all, George. That, no. And it's obvious. Okay, okay. it's obvious. And again, um, interesting article from the BBC because they, they make our made our arguments for right, it very right, that's right yeah right, exactly i mean it's like they're making the argument in spite of themselves i mean it's, you know they're trying to be as as pro-latvian and anti-russian as possible but what they're putting in is is really you know it's very damning about latvia well there's a lot of you know they um george and i have talked about this before when when putin has uh, famously said you know that the, the the end of the soviet union was a the worst uh, geopolitical. Yeah, yeah, the ge of, yeah, the geopolitical of the 20th century. Yeah. 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 But as George said, he booked and the entire Soviet experience in that speech. Like in, in 1917. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But specifically when he made that, he was making reference to the fact that millions of ethnic Russians found themselves in other countries when right. the Soviet Union came to an end. That's right. That's what he meant by catastrophe, that's right. okay? That's right. It, it, no, 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 no. It, it, no, he just misses the Soviet Union. He doesn't. His right. criticism of the Bolsheviks is endless, okay? Yes, exactly. And, exactly. And, and, and so um, he's, he's worried about his own people and, he, and, and there's pressure on him to watch out for ethnic Russians. Particularly, again, it, it pains me so much and it, it gives George and I a very specific interpretation and perspective about the, what's going on in Ukraine. The people of the Donbass were uh, vilified, killed, blockade, 
everything you can imagine, okay? And these are ethnic Russians. And ethnic Russians in Russia say, you can't do this to us. And right. this is the result. That's right. That, you know, that, that, that's right. And uh, it, it seems that uh, Latvia and of course the EU and NATO don't seem to have learned very much. You know, it's like, you know, all, all, everything that's happened this year and you thought, well, isn't it time for a rethink? You know, if we, basically, you know, if, as, we, as we move into the future, that we got to kind of rethink our approach. No, 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 you know, Stoltenberg says, Ukraine will be a member of NATO. He said this the other day, Ukraine will be a member of NATO. <laughs> so, you know, you, know, you think Latvia, yeah, everything, everything Latvia does is good. You know, we're, we're solidly with Latvia, you know, fighting against the Russians. Yeah, well, this the, the uh, I, I'm going to stick with my, my um, prediction. Um, you don't have to agree with me, but uh, NATO might still exist as an organization, but not in the same way it did on uh, February 24th, because uh, one of the Russian aims, in my opinion, is to break the back of NATO. And I think there's going to be pretty good progress in that direction, yeah, which I, is I, a good thing, okay? Right. And that's why we are on locals, because you can't say that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that, yeah. All righty. All right, George, this is uh, Peter and George. We're the Gaggle. We're on Locals, as I just said here. So you go to thegaggle.locals.com. Uh, please visit our store. And you got a long, long wait until George's next it's, it's, slide. It's brutal. It's, it's going to be a brutal, brutal. wait. Yeah, it's going to be very tough to get through. It's going to be four days until my next uh, Locals live stream, Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Come with comments, criticisms, suggestions, and on the way out the door, don't forget, little buddy. We can look at him. I mean, he's he's, he's just he's beyond uh, despair. You know, he's, he's eating like, ice. He's eating <laughs> ice. That that's what he's come down to. You know, that's it. He's it's crunching ice. You know, it's, it's I guess he's just cooling off his anger about the empty tip chart. Eating exactly. Eating yeah. chihuahua anger. <laughs> chihuahua anger. So, um, if you have a few bob in your pocket. Whip them out. Dunk them in the uh, tip jar. And uh, that'll, that'll keep him happy for a little while. Um, so we're very grateful for all of your help and friendship and support. Uh, the more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can invest in improved technology. And, you know, the more we'll be able to tamp down little buddy's anger. So it's, it's a big job, but someone has to do it. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.